we are in the, I'm going to call it creator's aisle, because it's not just artists, it's creators of comic books. I, I like creator, creator art, alley, aisle, I don't know. What, what do you think? Sounds fair to me. Yeah. Sure, creator. Yeah. Tony, Tony is with us here, Tony Bettard, and known for, I could go on forever, like Uncanny X-Men, uh, let's see, Green Lantern, uh, Catwoman, uh, right? Supergirl, yeah. Exiles, yeah. Uh, and, and also some smaller places like CrossGen Comics and Valiant. So, so yeah, you probably had some time with Billy Tushy a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I worked for him for a couple of years, actually. Yeah, that was an adventure. <laughs> now, is Billy, was he a good boss? Billy, uh, you know... It was it was weird because it was a very small operation, okay. um, uh, very high pressure, you know, to, just to, to keep up with the runaway success he had at the time. I think he had uh, books that were selling at 90,000 copies at the time, and and really we were like a three-man operation. Um, so there was there was a lot of stress involved, a lot of late nights, and you know, driving the film out to the airport so that it could get to the printer in time, you know. Um, but it was it was great and. Well, I did, love him. Did Billy talk or swear like a sailor a couple of times? Because oh. I know Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah. There were times when it felt like it was in a, a scene from Saturday Night Fever or something, you know, with, with uh, him and his mom yelling at each other and, you know, just all this crazy New York Italian, you know, uh, stuff going on. Uh, um, but uh, I, I love them both. And his mom actually showed up to the show. I gave her a big old hug. It was really nice to see her. Yeah. And that didn't scare you from comics, that experience back then? No, um, I learned so much working there from, uh, from dealing with the distributors to generating the content to, to doing film and, and dealing with the printer. The whole process we had to do. Um, there was no better way to learn about how to make comics soup to nuts than, than working there. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that really led you into the world of comic books? Is there a golden issue or something when you're a little kid and you're like, I want to do that? Was a Marv Wolfman where you're like, hey, this is a guy that writes comic books. There's a guy that actually does that. I want to do this. Was it something um, like that? Yeah, it was kind of weird. I was I was into Conan the Barbarian, and my girlfriend knew that, and she um, uh, bought me a Savage Sword of Conan uh, uh, comic. And and it was funny because when she gave it to me, I was trying to act happy about it, but I was kind of a Conan snob, you know. I was like, if it's not Robert E. Howard, you know, it's not the real thing. But I looked at it, and um, it was like, wow, someone really worked hard to put this thing together. And it was the weirdest issue. There was um, Conan uh, was fighting these three um, dwarves, and they would stand on each other's shoulders and basically be become one tall, you know, fighter uh, with six arms, you know? I mean, it was just, it was too stupid to live, and yet it was awesome. Uh, so after that, I read Secret Wars. This was back in 85 or something, and that's what really hooked me. You know, when I saw the whole Marvel, um, you know, universe basically all all stuck in one place, then I was like, oh, I got to go and find out who these X-Men guys are, and, and what's up with this Wolverine guy? I'd never heard of him before, you know? And that's, that's what really did it. Do the comics still have that magic, do you think, that they did that hooked you and hooked me? Yeah. Is, is, it, is that magic still there? Oh, I, I'm sure it is. Uh, and I think that, you know, they always say that every comic is somebody's first comic. So um, uh, I think a lot of the, the stuff that's going on now is, is drawing in new readers. And so they're all having that moment in their own way. Um, and then there's still comics that, that I, you know, that really grab me. Um, but it's... it's it's more rare nowadays because when you're working in it, it's it's like working at the candy shop, and you, you don't want to eat another piece of candy sometimes, you know. But there's still things like that Paper Girls uh, comic uh, from Image um, that it's it's just so fresh and and uh, you know. That's the sort of stuff I look for now. Do you still go into the comic book store and say, okay, this, or have a poll list, a subscription list? Do you have any no, of that? No. I, God, I can't remember the last time I was in a comic store. Okay. I'm just kind of curious. Are you discovering online? Yeah. Yeah. I've actually kind of switched over to reading them on Comixology, which I never thought I was going to like that. You know, I, I was kind of, you know, old school about it until I finally did the whole assisted, I, I don't, guided view, I think they call it, right. where it goes panel to panel. And I realized that you read the story beat by beat, you know, the way you really should be reading it. And a lot of times when I, I, I look at a comic book, um, I'll just take in the whole page and even just sort of like speed past, uh, you know, uh, word balloons. But when I'm reading it online, it, it really kind of forces you to read the story as it's meant to be told. See, I was wondering, can you actually read it and enjoy it, or are you reading it and going, wow, I wouldn't have written it that way? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I totally, um, most of the time, just in, enjoy stuff. You know, but it's like watching movies or something. Every now and then you hit a, a clunky piece of dialogue or, you know, and not, not everything is, is perfect, so. I, I want to talk about a certain 
company if you're comfortable with. If you're not, we will sort of edit this out. The, the question is about Marvel now. Okay. okay, as a writer, the Captain America thing that just broke before yeah. Megacon started, how as a writer do you feel about that just on observation uh, or hearing about it? I have zero problem with it. Uh, I've, I've kind of been amused uh, and even encouraged by, by the reaction that it's getting online. Everybody's just losing their minds about yeah. this thing. But you know that they wouldn't have done this if they didn't have a game plan and some sort of a payoff to this. And they're not just going to completely trash one of their marquee characters. So I, I just trust that they're going to be able to pull this off. And it's really going to all be in the execution, you know? They'll either do it well or they won't. Um, but it's getting a lot of attention and, and you know. It, people are going to buy it. Right. right? Right? Totally. So it's it's got to help sales. What I found was funny, though, was that on the same day um, uh, Rebirth and that comic come out, and it was almost like the polarity uh, reversed, you know, yes. between Marvel and, and DC, because everybody's like, oh, DC books and DC movies are always so, you know, dark and, and everything. And, and, you know, suddenly it seemed like Marvel was playing the, the dark thing, and DC was all full of light and, and joy and hope. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It's like two different worlds not totally exist. It's weird, yeah. you know. Um, I need to ask you one more question, okay? It's kind of one of those controversial kind of questions. Okay. okay. Uh, anybody who's been following the Riley and Kimmy show and one of our friends, uh, another show that he does, he's brought to attention, it's, it's no secret here, some of the uh, swiping thing that goes on in the art world. Right. I'm curious, does that happen in your world as a writer? Is, it, is that something that is out there that somebody starts trying to publish a comic book, but they've actually are grabbing the story and the dialogue or a lot of it? Does it ever? I, it might. I've never really noticed it. Um, uh, what happens more often is that you'll have a, an idea that you want to get out there, but you've kind of kept it in the drawer, so to speak, for you know a while, and then somebody beats you to uh, to press, you know, and uh, so that kind of thing happens where you know. Uh, like I had a ghost whisperer type idea that I wanted to do a while back and then that show came out and and it was kind of like you know it was it was different than than what I wanted to do but that space has now been occupied you know and, and it's it's that much harder to uh, to get out there with your own thing um, I would say the suggestion is if you have the idea to write something you do it don't delay and to yeah. get it out yeah if you can for sure you know um, I've, I've got about 10 things that are in the drawer that you know I would love to get out there and just it, the paying work always gets in the way you know which the paying work is fun I love write, you know writing stuff uh, with with these uh, DC characters but you know I really need to do something of my own and and the ideas are all there you know I just need to make time for them do you do you write every day at a set time you say okay I'm a, I'm a writer from nine to five and then I take a break or do you write when something hits you no uh, it's it's pretty steady I you know you can't wait for inspiration and uh, and also I'm better in the morning uh, I wake up I'm fresh you know um, I always think of, uh, of Hemingway supposedly would write until noon and then crack open a bottle and and you know uh, That's what you mentioned, because I, I was going to kind of ask that question. I heard he actually would write a number of words. He'd say, okay, I'm going to write a certain amount, and then it's time to stop. I hit that amount. Yeah. I, I think that's crazy, you know? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't do it like that, but I, I do more like hours or something. Like, I'm going to just put in uh, a day's work here, and, and if I don't, then I, it nags at me, you know? Like, uh, it just feels like I haven't earned my, my pay, you know? Well, one little bit more. You know, just one more here, and I'll let you go. Um, do you, what kind of script is it that you do? Is it is it one of those detailed Hollywood scripts, or are you kind of, or does it depend on the artist? Is it? I, I actually have one here. This is the script for um, uh, Green Lantern: New Guardians number one. Uh oh. And what I do is a, a full script, but you can see um, that uh, each page doesn't always take up a whole page. Wow. And I try and keep it fairly sparse uh, as to the uh, panel descriptions, but but they're there. The dialogue's there. It's broken down panel by panel. But the understanding is that um, if the artist wants to, you know, sees a better way to tell the story visually, they can depart from this. They can take panels oh. and, and combine them. They can add a panel if they feel like it helps the pacing. Um, uh, but, you know, a few rules of thumb that I learned uh, when I was editing, and, and, you know, I was editing guys like uh, uh, Garth Ennis and, and Grant Morrison and, and Brian Azzarello, and, and, you know, seeing the commonalities between all their scripts, um, generally, uh, you, you have one page of script per one page of, of you know, finished comic. Okay. If you go past that, you're probably overwriting it. And, um, and if you have less, then, you know, that's a good thing. And, uh, 
Uh, also, when, uh, when the art comes back, I usually go uh, and do another dialogue pass because what I have in, you know, in the script doesn't, it doesn't always fit the art. Gotcha. You know, sometimes you have to explain something in the art. Sometimes the art is so clear that you can cut dialogue. And the more you're telling it visually, and, you know, the better off you are. Fantastic. Where's the next place you're going to be, at, well, by the time we upload this right. and have this available, Megacons into history books, where's the next event somebody can see you at? I'm going to be at uh, Supercon in Miami in, in July, around July 4th weekend. Cool. We'll put a link to your website, and I know you have one, if I remember right, or Facebook page, one of the yeah, two, Facebook. and we'll put a link to that, and we'll have that on our website. Thank you for being on the Riley and Kimmy Show. Thank you. Thank you.